Hello guys and welcome to Learning with JGO. In this video, we will be discussing a very short poem, The Cathedral. This poem was written by a Ghanaian poet known as Kofi Awono. He was born in the year 1935 in the Volta region of Ghana and acquired a lot of knowledge and experience schooling and teaching overseas as well as Ghana. One thing is common throughout most of his works. He laments the extinguishing importance of the African tradition being overtaken by the European culture. As evident in the anvil and the hammer, the house by the sea, the weaver bird, and many other works he has produced, Kofi Awono critically condemns the impact of the European culture and modernization on the indigenous African culture. The cathedral is no exception. It also carries messages deeply rooted in the poet's belief in the African traditional religion and way of life. Before we proceed with the analysis of the poem, let's quickly have a sense of it as I recite. On this dirty patch, a tree once stood, shedding incense on the infant corn. Its boughs stretch across a heaven, brightened by the last fires of a tribe. They sent surveyors and builders, who cut the tree, planting in its place a huge senseless cathedral of doom. The poem is generally a critic about the abandonment of the African tradition due to influence by external forces. The poem talks about the establishment of a cathedral in place of a tree. The poet emphasizes the importance of the tree and condemns the construction of a cathedral which has brought an end to life of the tree. It can be observed that the first five lines of the poem talks greatly about the importance of a tree. It should be understood that the title of the poem, The Cathedral, symbolizes modernization and the European culture. A patch is being described as a place a tree once stood. A patch is a small area of ground covered by specific vegetation. In the poem, the poet qualifies that patch as dirty. Dirty because it has been violated and polluted by the replacement of a tree with a cathedral. In the eyes of the poet, the cathedral is not a like-for-like -like replacement for the tree and as such, considers its establishment as abominable. The tree that is being replaced represents the African tradition. The tree is a blessing to the African community. Trees are revered so much by Africans and it was very common to find big trees at the center of old African communities. Today, such trees are no more as they have been replaced by complex buildings. The replacement of these trees with cathedrals represent the painful transition from the African traditional way of life to the European way of life. The cathedral therefore can be thought of as aspects of the European culture that many Africans have adopted. The taste for everything foreign says it all. Foreign goods, foreign music, foreign way of leadership, foreign educational systems, foreign dressings, and even most food that are being eaten are imported, even though there is that capacity for Africans to produce abundant food. The tree epitomizes everything African. It is a symbol of growth and vitality in that it shares its incense on the infant corn. The activity of incense shedding introduces us to the unlimited benefits of the tree to Africans. The connection of Africans to vegetation is so great. This is evident in the food the tree provides, the shelter it provides in times of warmth, the dresses that are made out of it, the medicine that is produced in times of illnesses, Trees served as the ideal location where stories and tales were told, where traditional knowledge was passed on from generation to generation, where shrines were built, and where communities gathered to receive information from their leaders. The tree simply was the catalyst that made African life so simple. It is therefore not surprising that the poet chose a tree as a symbol for the African culture. The poem also talks about incense shedding. Incense are perfumes produced by trees. 
In typical African traditional settings, they are used as holy liquids for rituals and purification in religious ceremonies. In that regard, one can identify incense as a symbol of blessing to the infant's corn. The infant corn depicts youthfulness, the promise of growth, longevity, prosperity, and hope for a brighter future. The infant corn demonstrates that Africans are still evolving and have so much to learn, but the protection and support that the source of the incense, that is the tree, gives to Africans ensures that Africans are on course to achieving prosperity. It is only a matter of time until Africans discover their very own version of modernity. Its boughs stretch across a heaven, brightened by the last fires of a tribe. The importance of the tree is demonstrated yet again in these lines. The boughs of the tree, according to the poet, stretches across a heaven. This line brings to bear the spiritual importance of the tree. The poet demonstrates the might of the tree in a way that the tree is seen as huge and tall, making its branches cross the heavens. The fourth line of the poem clearly shows the relationship between Africans and the Almighty God in the heavens. If only the African tradition was understood better enough, the tree wouldn't be cut for a cathedral to stand in its place. The poet educates his readers on African traditional worship by using the tree as a religious symbol. As most religions do, by communicating to God through a medium, the tree is used to represent all forms of media through which Africans communicate to their maker. This perhaps explains why the promise of growth and prosperity to Africans, symbolized by the infant corn, is worth believing. The spiritual branches of the tree across the heavens do not only provide shade and protection for the infant corn to survive, it also ensures that the droplets of rain it receives are scattered evenly to every young corn to make their growth possible. In the next line, the tree is said to be brightened by the last fires of a tribe. The tribe here represents the African traditional values and customs. If these customs are described as the last fires by the poet, it only signifies the beginning of an end to the African tradition. They send surveyors and builders who cut that tree, planting in its place a huge senseless cathedral of doom. Compared to the first five lines, in which the importance of the tree was greatly emphasized, the last four lines focuses on the nostalgic feeling of the poet towards the loss of the tree and its rallying call for Africans to return to their roots. The first mention of modernization or any attempt to introduce the European culture, probably through colonization, can be felt in the arrival of surveyors and builders. These surveyors and builders are responsible for the loss of the African culture as their only mission was to cut the tree. In a proper sense, the builders can be viewed as the colonial masters who arrived to change the way of life of all Africans in all aspects. There were many different trees, but they decided to cut that one tree on which Africans leaned on. Why would a cathedral be planted onto the very patch where a mighty tree once stood? A tree that gave its infants corn hope for a better future. A tree from which refuge was sought in times of difficulty. All the benefits of the tree were enjoyed by the people of Africa uninterruptedly until the arrival of surveyors who cut the tree. The cutting of the tree demonstrates the ruthlessness of the surveyors as they showed no respect for African values and traditions. A huge senseless cathedral of doom is planted on an African patch. Why does the poet label the cathedral as senseless? and as something that brings doom to the people of Africa. This could be because Africans were already content with their way of living and cutting their only tree brought suffering upon them. Many Africans were oppressed in many unimaginable ways trying to reject what was forced upon them. Because the cathedral caused havoc to Africans, the poet feels that the land on which the tree once stood 
has lost its purity and as such qualifies it as a dirty patch.